Ja. Number 12. The answer is wrong. Let me see. That's what I have. I double checked it in the answer book as well. And I did these by hand so that matches the answer book. I can go over number 12 with you afterwards. As soon as I do this, just, just stop me after class and I'll, I'll go over that one with you, okay? Zero, zero times three. Zero times three? It, the, x, the x value is zero, so it's two times zero, not three times zero. I'll, I'll go over number 12 with you right after class. Just let me go through the slope and then we'll go through it, okay? Okay, so today our new section is going to be the slope of a line. Okay, so slopes are really important, and the slope is all about change. And in math mathematics, a lot of the things that you're going to be doing from now on have to do with how things change, how graphs change, how equations change. And especially when we're doing this section, which is linear equations in their graphs, linear equations in two variables, the idea of a slope tells you what does one variable do as the second variable changes. And so that's, what the, that's why we're studying slopes. And so let's go through some information on some slopes. slope as the rise over the run. Rise, how much up or down you go from a given point, we call that the change in y. And my y-axis here, as I move along either from the right or the left on the x-axis, how does my y or my y-value change? So the change in y is going to give me my rise. In the same way, our change, our run is going to be the change in x value. So as the x value changes, that's going to be our run. So let me come up with a couple points. Um, give me a point, uh, Maggie. Any point, it doesn't matter. Three, negative five. Okay. And give me another point, Courtney. One. Now, when you have these problems in the book, let me give you a quick hint. They're all going to be side by side because that's the way books list things. They list them side by side. If you rewrite the problems vertically, one point on top of the other, you will uh, help yourself to not make a mistake. One of the common mistakes you'll make is changing your x values and your y values. And you'll do that because they'll be horizontal and you're going back and forth. And if you do them vertically, it's hard to make a mistake. So rather than write them the way they are in the book, where they're horizontally one right next to the, each other, if you rewrite them like this, I promise you that it'll be easier and harder for you to make a mistake. So that's just a quick tip. So to find the slope, we want to find between two points, how does, my, how does my y value change? That's my rise. And then how does my x value change? That's my run. Okay. So in the picture in the beginning, I had a ski slope. Uh, ski slopes have negative slopes. They go downhill. Nobody skis uphill. But so as basically as you go down, as you go across horizontally, your y value is going down. And that's what the idea is. If you climb a mountain, you're doing the opposite. If you hike up a mountain, you're, you have a positive slope. You're going up the mountain. Okay? And so that's what we want to find out. What is, how do these things change and what's our slope? So and here's another tip. It doesn't matter which one of these are on the top and the bottom. You can find the slope of the line and it's the exact same slope whether you Start at 2, 1, or if you start at 3, 5, that doesn't matter. So you can interchange these, and one can be on the top and one can be on the bottom, it doesn't matter. What does matter is that you subtract all the way down. So to find out how they change, we're just going to subtract. So let's see. Austin, why don't you do this one? Negative 5 minus 1, what is that? Which one? Oh, I'm sorry, Austin Carney. Negative six. Okay. Negative six. 
That's how my y values changed. Okay, and then Austin Farrell. How about my change in x? One. Because three minus two is one. So my slope is negative six. Okay, based on the two points that you gave me. Now let me prove to you that it doesn't really matter. I can do that this way as well. Because one minus negative five is six, and two minus three is negative one. So either way, it's negative six. It doesn't matter which one you put in the top or the bottom. But one of the mistakes that you can make is when you do these like this. When they're horizontally, you can say this y minus that y over this x minus this x. But if you're not careful, you'll switch your x's and your y's since they're all on the same level. And so that's why I said if you do it vertically, it's a lot easier to do and it's a lot harder to make a mistake this way. Either way, we'll give you the right answer as long as you do it correctly, but I would change it to the vertical. Okay. That's what a slope is. Now, when we graph these things, notice that as you go from the left to the right, if you climb, you know, it doesn't have to be steep. It can be a really steep, this is sort of steep, but it could be just slight. It's still positive. As long as you're climbing, that's a positive slope. Okay? So anytime your slope is positive, you're going to be climbing. It can be steep or it can be rather gradual, and that's just going to depend on the number of your slope. Okay? So if you have a slope of 1, that means that you're going up at the same rate that you're going over. Okay? So that's about an average. If it's higher than 1, it's going to be a steep slope. If it's lower than 1, for example, if it was 1 half, it's going to be a gradual slope. But they're both going to be positive. In the same way, if your slope is negative, it's going to drop down. This is like a ski slope. So if you go from left to the right, if your slope is negative, it's going to go downhill, either steeply or, you know, this might be the triple diamond ski slope, or you might have, you know, the bunny slope where it goes down like this. It could go down gradually, but either way, that's going to be a negative slope. If your slope is horizontal, that's a slope of zero, okay? And basically, uh, that's because notice that you're not changing your y value at all. Your y value is staying the same throughout the whole, the whole time. So your rise is zero. It's not rising at all. It is running, so it's going all the way over, but it's not rising at all. So that's zero. And then finally, if you have a vertical line, that slope does not exist. It's, it's, we call that undefined, or it has no slope. Your book says has no slope. Uh, we usually say that's undefined because we can't divide by zero. Notice if my run, my x value doesn't change at all, I'm dividing by zero. And we know that we can never divide by zero. So that's why it's undefined. So you may get some problems where it'll just ask you, here's a slope. Is it a positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, or undefined? Okay. All right. Let's find some slopes. Okay. David, how about the first one? What's the first thing you want? I want to find the slope of these, between those two points. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Okay. How do you want to do it? Well, if this was your problem, how would you do it? Very good. Because if you do them this way, it's a lot easier, I think. Okay, and now what do I get? All right, this is negative one. Is that going to go on the top or the bottom? My, this is my change in x, my run. Is that going to go on the top or the bottom? The bottom. Okay. And what's going to go on the top? What's my rise? Three. So this has a slope of negative three, which tells me right away that my slope is going to go down like a ski slope, and it's going to be fairly steep because it's a number larger than one. So it'll look something like that. Okay. Michael, how are we going to do this one? Some of these settings. Negative 5, 2. 8, 2. Okay, now what? Negative 13. That's the other mistake that's common, and you really have to be careful of. 
Because a lot of you, that's what you're going to make the mistake of doing is you're going to start on this side. You actually always want to put that on the top because you're doing that first. And you have to remember the change in Y goes first. So just sort of train yourself. Do this side first. And that'll be a lot easier. So if you put that on the top, that's going to be a slope of zero. What's that going to look like, Michael? A horizontal line. Excellent. Okay. Um, Claire, how about the next one? Very good. Over what? If I have 5 minus negative 4, oh. when I subtract, I add the opposite. Over 9. Which is? Negative one. What's that going to look like? Which is going to look like what? Like a down, like a ski slope. It's going to look like that. Okay, good. All right. I think you guys get the hang of that. We don't need to do the other four of them. Let's move on to the next. Okay. So we have two theorems in this section. The first one it says that the slope of the line ax plus by equals c. b cannot equal 0. And, that, and that's because we know that if our y value, our change in y is 0, then that's undefined. So we can't have a 0 for b. Is negative a over b. So any line that I give you in this form, if you set it up like this, your x value plus your y value equals c, then negative a over b is going to be your slope. OK? So using just that. How will I do this? x minus y equals 2. OK, who am I call on you? Sam. x minus y equals 2. What am I going to do to find the slope? Well, we want this to look sort of like this, right? Yeah. So it looks sort of like that now, because you have an, you have an ax, because that's just a 1. So you have an ax. And you have a by, because that's just 1 times y. And you have a c for 2. The only thing that's different is notice you have a minus sign here instead of a plus sign, right? So how am I going to make this a plus sign? Uh, like you're multiplying negative with all. Multiply negative 1 by both sides. That's what we call that property. The, <laughs> the multiplication property of <laughs> equality, right? As long as two things are equal, you can multiply the same thing by both sides and they'll still be equal. So I can minus, I can multiply this whole thing by negative 1 as long as I multiply this side by negative 1. And so that's negative x plus y equals negative 2. So now we're in that form, right? So now what do we do to find our slope? Our slope is minus a over b. What's our a value? No, negative 1. Negative 1. So we have. And what's our y value? What's our b value? Um, negative 1. No. Oh, uh, y, negative 2. It's right here. What number is on our uh, 1. 1. Good. Negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So this is negative, negative 1, which is just 1. Okay? So this is going to be a positive slope this way, this line here. OK. Let's see. Actually, let's. OK. How about this one here, Megan? y plus 3x equals 1. What's the slope? Well, you just want to get it in this form. So how? what's different from this to that? What's different? Well, it's, it's, it's the place of where you have your x and your y, right? They're switched around. Can we switch these around? Can I, can I do this? 3x plus y equals 1? Why can I do that? Of? The commutative property of addition. Good. 
So because it's addition, you can multiply, move, mix those around. And so now it's pretty close to that, right? So now your slope's just negative A over B. What's A? A is the coefficient of your x, 3. And what is your y? So your slope's negative 3. But really slope down like that, really steep. Okay, and last but not least, who have I not called on here? Micah. How about this one over here? 2x plus 3y equals 5. What's my slope? Two over three with what sign? Negative. Good. Negative two thirds. So that's going to be like a ski slope, but it's gradual, right? Because it's less than one. So our graph would look something like that. Okay. Our second theorem says this, if Px, which is the point, any point x1 and y sub 1, we say x sub 1 and y sub 1, any point, any x and y value, uh, is, let that be any, any x, y value, be a point, and m a real number, there is one and only one line, I'm sorry, line L through P, having the slope of m. So M, we use M as the symbol in math for slope. So you're going to see this all the time. So when you see M, that's slope. Uh, so the equation of the line is Y minus Y1 equals M multiplied, which is our slope, times X minus X1. So in order to find the equation of a line, all I have to do is substitute in my Y, my y coordinate, my X coordinate, and my slope, and I can get an equation of a line. So um, Maggie, give me a point. Any point, it doesn't matter. Four, two. Four, two. And Dominica, give me a slope. Any slope. Three. Three. Okay. All right. So my algebra one class gets excited. They'll, I see pick a number and they see like 6,312 or something. They like to do that to me. So, so my Y stays the same. My X stays the same. So I'm going to substitute in my y value, my x value, and my slope. And that gives me the equation of the line. I can simplify that, which the book's going to want you to do. I use the distributive property, right, to go in there. And I can add 2 to both sides. That's 3x, not 3 some box. So that's the equation of the line. Let's rewrite that so you can. 3x minus 10. Okay? So if you have a, any point given to you and you have a slope given to you, you can substitute in using this theorem, which is the point slope form of the line. That's what they're going to call that in the next section if you want to take notes. So that'll be tomorrow. That's the point slope form of the line, and that's how you get the, That's how you get it. All right, so. Graph the line through the point P having the slope M. Find the coordinate of two other points on the line. So my given point here is 4, 3. So notice I put that in red. I, I plotted 4, 3 on my line there. I know my slope is 2. So think about what slope is again. That's rise over run, OK? That means if my slope is 2, that's, that can be written as 2 over 1. So notice. I'm going to rise up 2 every time I run over 1. So if I start here, notice if I go up 2 and over 1, that point's going to be on my line. If I go up 2 and over 1, if I rise 2 and run 1, I'm going to keep finding points on my line. If I go backwards, notice that if I run away 1, I go down 2. Run away 1, go down 2, all the way down. So all the green points, just by counting some squares on a simple graph, are all points on the line. And I want to know the coordinates of two other points. You could put any of those, any of those green points. In fact, you could also put any point in between. You know, this uh, two and a half zero uh, is on the line as well. So I mean, you could have fractions, but any of these points would be your two other. Okay. 
Notice that if I substitute those into my point line formula that we just did, all I did was substitute in my 3 for my y value, my 4 for my x value, and 2 for my slope. And then I simplified this, and I got it to the same form. This, by the way, and I'm getting a section ahead, but if you're taking notes, is called the slope-intercept form of the line. Okay? And this is what you're going to use most often, to tell you the truth. And the reason we use that is it's very, very helpful. This tells us quickly what the slope is, because our slope is always our x coefficient. And this here, does anybody know what this is called? Why we call it the intercept? It's because that's where the graph is going to cross the y-axis. And if you notice down here, our graph crosses at the point 0, negative 5. That's where it crosses. And I know I'm getting into the next section, so I'm going to stop there. But uh, this basically is very helpful because it tells you quickly what the slope is and where it crosses the y-axis. So if I just gave you any line, if I told you y equals x plus 2, quickly you could tell me that that graph crosses the x-axis. Let's see. I can see that that crosses the x-axis at 2, and it's a slope of 1, which tells me that it's going to be an even slope. So that's what that line would look like. We'll stop there for today as far as the new stuff, because that gets into the next section. I gave everybody a worksheet, and we do have 10 minutes. Cool. Okay, so this has the same kind of problems that we just went over on the board. So start doing these in class. I'm going to come around and help you if you get stuck. Just raise your hand as I come around. The homework's up on the board over there to the right. I wrote that up there. Yes, I didn't there. Turn off the recorder.